paper here that was real scientific paper. So we can, um, and they basically created like many solar systems that exist in this little magnetic device. Let me show you. Or if they do, uh, couldn't it be reproved or proved easily, shown easily to be the case? Um, all right, that's good enough. We'll bring this one up. So this is like one device. This is just a, I don't know what this is. It's something that's sold. I guess these are like nine amazing gadgets, but this little thing kind of goes around in the sand and actually follows its own path. What I thought at first too, I'll have to go back there, sorry. What I thought was weird too is I thought this thing was going to come around and c complete a shorter orbit, which would be funny because that's actually what the ISS does. Um, so they have a bunch of these. Here's this guy. Yes, I thought it was going to keep going this way, but it fell into its own hole. Kind of like a little, uh, this thing's a garbage one. And this is crazy. Watch this. This is a magnetic putty. Watch this. <laughs> That's creepy. But again, I think that that is real. But I think that uh, the one that I have questions about is, well, they got this thing, which maybe is real. I could buy that. It's called the Mega Levitator. Okay, but now we're going to watch this paper that was written uh, here. It's called the Xeron, okay? Oops, you're not going to be able to read that very well unless I bring this one over. All right. So this is a scientific paper as far as I can tell. Here's your authors. Here is the uh, paper. Here's the supplemental material. So you can actually go to this video. Is this real? Because if it is, I think there's so much here that I need to explore. We took a physical object off the surface and placed it in the air using computer-controlled magnetic levitation. We call this object Xeron, short for Zero Newton. You can leave the Xeron in the air, representing the sun that will cast a virtual shadow of a physical object. Users can visualize a computer simulation of how the planets revolve around one another. The Xeron system is composed of a magnetic levitator that suspends a magnetic object. A holographic sensor attached to the bottom of an electromagnet can sense the magnetic field change and measure the distance to an object. The system can change the object's this vertical real? suspension distance by controlling the duty cycle of the EWM signal that drives the electromagnet. A 3-axis linear actuator platform can position this magnetic levitator in 3D space, which coordinates to move an untethered object along a 3D path in mid-air. This is combined with a stereo camera and projection system that tracks the 3D position of and projects images onto the levitating object. The stable position of suspension is updated based on where and whether the user is holding this object. This entire setup coordinates to create a small anti-gravity space where users can leave and move the magnetic object in the air. Zeroon can record and repeat a user's physical motion Seems in the plausible. 3D mid-air space. Users can grab the Zeroon for a number of seconds to start recording and move it. Look at this, you and can actually Zeroon record your movements. the motion when released. <laughs> With this functionality, users can quickly prototype arbitrary 3D movements of virtual so let me just say something real quick. animation characters. One of my biggest issues has always been the ISS. And I'm just saying that they're, if they have the ability to do things like this, could just be some TIE fighter magnetically attached, tethered, uh, going round and round the sky. Users can create 3D camera paths for rendering virtual scenes of architectural models using Xeron as a camera. When users throw a 3D path in the air and release the Xeron, the camera is sent back to the initial position and then moved along the previously recorded 3D trajectory. On an additional screen, users can see the virtual scene of their model taken by the camera's perspective in real time. Real time? If the user wants to edit this path, they can intervene with the camera's path by holding a moving Xeron and starts from the current position of the camera to redraw or add another path. We demonstrate a tangible 3D Pong application that shows how the Zero system can be employed in computer entertainment. Users can experience being in the 3D computational space and interacting with the digital object as they hit the computer controlled Pong ball. 
so that's it. Um, but I, I think there's a lot there that uh, I guess I didn't know that we could really do that, especially electronically controlling it based on its you know feedback movement. Um, and I'm looking here just so you can see what I'm doing. Just trying to see what else because that was 2011. So it's just seeing. I mean, if people are figuring that stuff out, don't you think that governments or space agencies have been 25 years, 30 years ahead of that? So I do wonder why did space look so bad? Why was it such garbage until uh, recently? And even recent is garbage. But clearly something changed and it seems like technology changed, right? I mean, look at back at the 60s and 70s stuff. It looks so horrendous. But I see a lot of things here. Xeron uh, interaction on video this is from 2012. So it's still you know, 10 years ago. I want one of those things. Xeron is a physical and digital interaction element that floats and moves in space by computer-controlled magnetic... I don't know. And it memory... Oh, yeah, so weird. ...world on a small scale. Interact with us. So I wonder how much... Since we know gravity is garbage, it doesn't match observations. Clearly, they just hold on to it because they need the ball Earth. So if it's not gravity, what is it? And, you know, obviously electrical is a, a big, um, they got the electric universe. But I think that magnets make a lot more sense. We've seen kind of um, lots of evidence of that. I don't know what exactly quantum locking is. I know you have to get it real cold, but that's what it is up in space. Uh, we've seen a couple of different, I don't know how much we can trust the one that says it gets to 400 negative because, uh, you know, that was just somebody's like, well, it's not, it's not like everyday person's rocket, but it wasn't like NASA's rocket or something. So it's hard to, you know, hard to base anything off the rocket, what it tells you. Um, I don't see anything new 2013, 2017. It's all about this the same as Xeron thing. They just got people, you know, modular acoustic levitation for 3d path. It's the same paper over and over again same people oh wait, can i get it ah usually I have to pay for this shit um all right cool i'm gonna save this uh i just want to see if they say we summarize our country just follows the study so the research we did conducted so far makes us realize that the study of adaptive and tangible architecture design tool will not be wholly accomplished understood and delivered within the domain of the design study or the domain of the human computer interaction research instead the work we propose resides in the connection between multiple areas. Sorry, I was trying to see if that told me anything. Doesn't really. So I don't know if that's possible. I just am open to lots of ideas about how they're doing the sky. My personal belief is it is some sort of a projection, I guess. Um, not as, you know, I don't want to say that and people think I mean there's some sort of projection screen up there or something. Um, I don't think that. But I find it baffling that we can look through microscopes and recognize that we're looking into something, yet we look in the sky and think we're looking back in time.